I would like to update you on some of the initiatives we have been working on at the SVS for the last few months. The first initiative started with the Stanley Crawford Issues Forum last year, where we identified a major shortage of vascular surgeons in the United States with a worsening distribution uh, across several states and community hospitals. We have formed a task force and nearly 70 of you have volunteered to participate and divided the uh, efforts of this task force into three work groups. The first work group is identifying new possible sites for training programs to be able to produce more vascular first surgeons. We are trying to increase the number of fellowships and the number of residencies in the United States. The second work group is working very hard on a valuation study to try and identify the value of vascular surgeons to hospital systems and try to improve the uh, perception of need for vascular surgeons by our uh, institutions. The third work group is trying to identify alternative training mechanisms to uh, provide for vascular care by surgeons uh, in the community hospitals where fully trained vascular surgeons may not be able to uh, locate currently. The last year has also seen a significant activity from our government uh, and policy advocacy group. We have had uh, many issues to handle and we have several successes that have been, uh, uh, that have been achieved by our group. One has been uh, to stop the Medicare cuts to vascular ultrasound rooms and uh, maintaining the ENM uh, coding structure and compensation for 2019 and 20 to allow medical societies to develop a better solution over time. Uh, we have participated in securing uh, an increase in the funding of the NHLBI by nearly $220 million uh, and have participated with other societies in many other uh, activities in Washington, which leads me to ask most of you to provide as much support as you can to the PAC which funds a lot of these activities that impact our daily clinical work.